the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission may be forced to review some of the decisions arrived at by the current three commissioners or risk being challenged in court for having been made without quorum. LSK President Nelson Harvey says, stemming from last week's fun finding by the Court of Appeal that IBC did not have quorum to make policy decisions, there are certain election preparatory actions that could easily be deemed null and void. Let's get more from our very own Sam Gituku. The finding by the Court of Appeal that IABC did not have quorum to guide the process of verification of signatures may come to haunt IABC that has in recent past pronounced itself on the roadmap of the 2022 general election. IABC was not quiet when it embarked on the business of verifying the BBI signatures on membership of only three. The commission lost its quorum in April 2018 when three of the then remaining six commissioners resigned. Already, IABC has published the election operations plan, budgetary estimates for the election, and even called for tenders for some of the election materials needed for the 2022 general election. But it is the gazettement of campaign financing spending limits that could haunt the commission the more. They fall by the wayside automatically. They are what we call null and void ab initio, although it is proper that they be set aside pursuant to a request uh, taken to court. The controversial spending limits have largely split the political class, some of the view that they are unrealistic, with Parliament's Delegated Legislation Committee saying they should have been gazetted upon getting a nod from Parliament. The Campaign Financing Act could be the saving grace for IEBC, as it allows amendment of the gazetted spending curbs. If they don't look at it when they are quoted, then of necessity there will be need for legal intervention and the law society will be ready, willing and able to take the matter to court. For IABC though, they say that as they executed their duties, they were doing so with the strength of the High Court finding that the quorum could be as low as three. Lawyers agree that decisions made on such strength may not be illegal only that it doesn't stop anyone from challenging them based on the Court of Appeal judgment. I think it opens a lot of doors for scrutiny of all the activities, we have to be honest, that have been undertaken by IBC. Uh, because once the court pronounces that IBC did not have the quorum and mandate to do uh, Act A, then you cannot say that then they had the capacity to do a different thing mm -hmm. altogether. The risk of a challenge even on that election <laughs> Because of the creation of the voters' role. The, probably the voters' role and the registration of voters have been going on when there was no quorum, mm -hmm. when the institution was illegal. So is that, is that voters' role tainted? You know, those sorts of technical questions are not healthy in a process as delicate as an election. And as the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee retreats to consider and write a report after vetting four IABC nominees, Irene Masit's fate may lie with Parliament. She told Jay Lak she had unsuccessfully run for Jubilee nominations in 2017 for the seat of woman representative in Elgeo, Maraquit County. The constitution bars any person who may have stood for election to be an MP or MCA from being a commissioner. The spirit of the constitution was to preclude a politician who is partisan, who is affiliated to a party either now or before, from being a, an IBC commissioner. If they are to pursue that angle, then they must return a verdict that she is disqualified. The other aspect of it, as we have discussed, will be to take a simplistic uh, letter review of the Constitution and arrive at the conclusion that uh, she wasn't on the ballot and for that reason uh, she, she qualifies. But therein lies the mischief. You will have allowed a politician to be an IBC commissioner. Masset was cleared by the selection panel that forwarded eight names to the president for nomination of four commissioners. Should any name be rejected by parliament, the president can nominate another from the remaining list for vetting and subsequent approval. Sam Gitukosrizen TV, Nairobi.